Good morning, uh, my little skin nerds. So I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist based here in New York City. And today we're going to do something slightly different where we are going to talk about specifically how to take care of your skin and a little bit more while undergoing chemotherapy or even radiation therapy. So before I dive into it, um, I did a, I had a follower message me this past week about how she's about to start chemotherapy and it was really late at night and I read the message and then I just was like, I got to jump on stories on Instagram and just kind of give her a few tips. And I was shocked by the number of people who either were undergoing treatment themselves or had a loved one, a friend, a mother, a daughter, a father, an uncle, an aunt, a cousin, um, who was also undergoing something and wanted help in order to help them. So that's how this video came about. Um, if it doesn't help you directly, I hope that it will help somebody very close in your life because this is something that a lot of oncologists do not tell their patients um, how to take care of themselves because unfortunately it's not really taught. And unfortunately for me, I have had a few loved ones in my life who have gone through this. And so we're going to jump in. So before we start, what exactly is chemo? Chemo is a form of medical treatment that targets um, specific markers on tumor cells, certain molecules on tumor cells that are very, very highly reproducing. Unfortunately, it can't differentiate highly reproducing cells of your body, like your hair follicles. That's why you lose hair, because it targets it. It affects your nails, because your nails constantly are growing, and your skin, which is constantly shedding. And so it can affect the hairs, the nails, as well as your skin. Radiation, which we'll jump into towards the end of this video, and I'll touch on it very briefly, is a form of burning. You know, you're ultimately trying to burn the, the cancer, and unfortunately, it also burns through your skin. And so you can get burns once you undergo radiation therapy. So this is a video for kind of both of them. I'm going to try to differentiate them when I talk about treatments, but ultimately, what applies for one can apply for the other. So starting with chemotherapy, um, before we jump into the skincare, from a lifestyle perspective, your skin is going to ultimately become more sensitive. And so you now, even though you've never had sensitive skin, are going to have sensitive skin, at least throughout the duration of chemotherapy. The good news is a lot of the problems that come up while undergoing chemo will reverse once you're done. And so this is not something that you have to worry about for the rest of eternity. Okay, so it is a short term problem with hopefully a long-term reversal back to your normal self. The things you can commonly see with chemo are dry skin. We can also see acne breakouts. We can see hyperpigmentation, meaning an increase in discoloration um, of your skin and even your nails. Um, patients tend to become more photosensitive, so they are much more sensitive to the sun, depending on the chemotherapy that they are undergoing and there are a million honestly a million other types of skin rashes like hives and stevens johnson syndrome and things that are way beyond the scope of this video so to keep things simple from a lifestyle perspective you now have sensitive skin so the products that you use ideally are fragrance free from this point on to minimize any sort of risk of irritation or inflammation or angry looking skin so once you have that down, number two, we're going to avoid hot showers because hot showers are going to strip our skin of their natural oils and make you drier and more irritated in the process. Stick to lukewarm if you can. Number three, soaps. Save them to the places where the sun doesn't shine. Now, some might argue the sun only shines in those places, but stick them to your pits, your tits, and your groin. All right, um, keeping that area relatively clean on a daily basis because you do not want to have any sort of bacterial buildup that can lead to any sort of infection in those areas. And you don't necessarily need it on your full body. However, I have one suggestion, which I will get to in a second, that you can use very lightly on your body. And then um, number four, when it comes to the detergents that you use, stick to everything that is free of anything, like all free or tide free, no fragrances, no smells, things that are extremely gentle, formulated for little babies as well, although those tend to be higher priced because of marketing, so just be a little bit careful. But try to go for things that are very gentle, avoid fabric softeners, 
And when your clothes come into effect, so I guess this is tip number five or six, um, natural materials, avoid synthetic materials, avoid rough materials. I cannot wear wool for the life of me, even without sensitive skin. So things that are very soft, cashmere, cotton, and avoid, try to avoid dyed materials. So always wear maybe a long sleeved cotton, white cotton shirt underneath your clothing or a t-shirt or a tank top, something to protect your skin from being, from rubbing on your clothes. So that is what I would suggest that we start off with. Now, jumping into skincare. And since we touched on body, like I said, save the soap to the places where the sun doesn't shine. But if you are going to use a body wash, let it be a very gentle body wash. And there's this one by Cetaphil, which is called Restoradorm. Restoradorm. Restoradorm, which is a great one, especially for people with allergic skin. I absolutely love it. It is very light and gentle. I also like this one by Avino which is Calm and Restore for Sensitive Skin. I like it because of the oatmeal and that can be very calming. Side note, you can also put oatmeal in your bath and take a lukewarm bath with the oatmeal to help nourish your skin or even put a little bit of mineral oil in your bath. Mineral oil is not the devil, but that is a discussion for another day. But mineral oil can definitely also help you minimize the loss of water that is coming out of your skin, which is also known as TEWL, trans epidermal water loss. But these are two body washes that I really like um, that are very gentle for your full body. Now, once you come out of the shower, you need to lock in that moisture right away. Lock it in, lock it in, lock it in. You don't need to use a mist at this point because your skin is already soft. Aquaphor, and I'm gonna put a picture right here, has a body spray ointment, which is quite nice because it doesn't leave a tacky residue. Um, Aquaphor is basically Vaseline with lanolin. So there is a chance you might get allergic to lanolin, lanolin, which is a wool alcohol derivative, but it has a beautiful delivery system. Otherwise, my BFF and yours too, Vaseline, <laughs> Vaseline, the baby jars, the tinier ones, which are a quarter of this size, are even better than this one. I don't know why. They also come in sticks, okay? I love this stuff. This will save your skin. And this is something you should just carry around with you everywhere because you can use it on your cuticles to help lock in, to, to, avoid, to avoid cuticular damage. Um, and you can also use it as a final step, basting your face completely over your moisturizer. So I absolutely love these guys for your body. So those are two that I think are also great. Your lips are also going to get a little bit dry. You can definitely use Vaseline on your lips if you are not sensitive, but I do put a word of caution for this product, the Walita Skin Food. You can baste your lips and put a thick coating on your lips. Um, I'll put it now because I feel like my lips are extremely dry from this weather. The only problem is it has essential oils, so you might get a little bit allergic to this product. So I would say beware, approach with caution. If you feel anything, just stop it. Um, so those are the things that you can do to help yourself in, uh, when it comes to body care, um, mineral oil, gentle body cleansers, minimize the use of harsh soaps and hot water. Now, when it comes to your skincare, especially for your face, like we said, the goal is to keep that hydration in. I love a face mist. There is obviously a ton on the market. Aven has a face mist. This Aven is, their whole principle of their brand is based on the fact that the minerals in their water helps to reduce redness. So this is a good one. Evian has a face mist if you're feeling super fancy uh, because you should pamper yourself throughout this time. And honestly, spare no cost. To try to take care of yourself. If an Evian bottle makes you feel like you are somewhere in France and you are happy using it, just spend the dollar and use it and be happy. Okay, because ultimately your psyche is going to, get you through this time. And you have to stay strong up here for this to heal, okay? Um, a very close family friend of mine who passed away once said that the soul controls the mind and the mind controls the body. And I think there is a lot of truth to that. Your soul is strong, you're gonna get through this. And your soul is gonna control your mind to push you through. And if your mind has the power to push you through, your body will persevere. So. With that being said, spend the money on pampering yourself. Now, if money is an issue, you can obviously fill tap water or bottled water if you want, or even an Evian water into a vaporizing spray that you can buy on Amazon. And I'm going to post a picture here and I'll link it below. Um, or there are little vaporizers such as this one that you can buy. 
that can actually vaporize the water for you. So I actually have a little water here. I don't know if this is fully charged, um, but hold. Let's see. Ooh, that was a lot of water. Eek. I did not charge it, but basically it's like a nebulizer where the water comes out as a very lightweight mist. I will post a video from Instagram because I did post it on Instagram. So while this misting spray goes on, you can just literally sort of get sort of better humidity to your skin, even holding it in areas where you have extreme dryness. It's a great little hack. I've even tried putting a hydrating serum in here, mixing it with the saline. Let's just say it depends on how cheap your nebulizer is. You may or may not block it. So it's not something I fully recommend. So you can use it on your face even throughout the day to get the water in. These are pretty fine as well. But like I said, they're expensive. So you don't want to waste too much of them if you don't have the funds. Otherwise, get a vaporizer or even get a spray thing that you can get without any fancy plug-in from Amazon. So these I would apply as your first step for your facial skincare routine, followed by a hydrating serum. Like I said, and I'm not sponsored by any of these brands, so nobody think that I'm sponsored here, um, but Avino's Calm and Restore Oat Serum. They have a whole restore line that has been dedicated for cancer research, uh, which you guys should look into because they have been formulating with cancer patients in mind for years. Aven has a little bit of fragrance, so again, be careful, but they have their Hydrance Intense, and these are hydrating serums. I also really like Dr. Jart's Ceramidin Liquid. Now, I think this is basically a serum. I was corrected by the company and told that it is a hybrid between an essence and a toner. Um, those are my children. So it's a hybrid between an essence and a toner, and it is infused in ceramides, which are basically, if you think of your skin as like a bunch of bricks, which are your skin cells, and the stuff holding skin cells together, the mortar, this is like the mortar holding skin cells, and I don't know if that's the right word, mortar, I think it is, but it's basically a serum, okay? I don't know. Anybody, any brand can say whatever they want about their product. They can classify them as they want. In my book, this is a serum, and it is a hydrating, cushiony serum. So you guys can use that one by Dr. Jart. And those are the hydrating serums. So once we have the hydrating serums in, let us lock that baby into our skin and we are gonna use thicker moisturizers. We've spoken about this, the Cicaplast Bone B5. It is rich in panthenol and it is rich in vitamin B5, which helps to protect your barrier. It also has zinc, which is a great calming, soothing, uh, ingredients, especially if you have any irritations. So I love this guy for your face. Um, we'll talk about it when it comes to radiation patients as well. And if that is not enough, you can buy a tub, literally a one pound jar of a tub from Vanacream that comes with a pump, which I fully appreciate. I will open it for you and I will show you guys all pumps require a little bit of working to get the actual goop out. But this is a new one that I just purchased. It is a fragrance-free, very thick moisturizer as well. So if you can't tolerate the B5, Vanny Cream has a really nice one that you can literally use all over your face. There's no zinc in it though. And that leads me to if you're having a lot of irritation on your skin, wherever on your body, even including your face, and you do not care about a white cast, triple paste. <laughs> My babies have stopped using diapers, but I used this all over their tushes when they were kids and it saved us many a times from, um, from irritations on their skin. Um, so I love those ones for your face and the rest of your body. Calamine lotion can also help if you're having a lot of itchiness, calamine. Um, and calendula is also something that a few of you guys from Instagram told me you used to help soothe irritated skin. So these are the moisturizers in a nutshell. And if, again, you want to feel fancy and just treat yourself, I love the triple lipid, which is clearly finished and that is infused in ceramides and fatty acids to help lock in moisture. Now, if that is not enough and you need more, baste yourself with Vaseline all over your face. Put a thick layer of this all over the moisturizer and honestly, be an ice skating rink because you need to slip and slide to allow your skin to hold into the moisture, 
okay? So I think those are probably the biggest ones when it comes to skincare that I have. And quickly shifting gears, um, for your hands, I love O'Keeffe's Working Hands. It is a great, great hand moisturizer. You can use the Vaseline, like I said, around your cuticles, but this one is a lifesaver. I would also say sleep with plastic cooking gloves at night if your hands are super dry. The cotton gloves are just going to absorb the goop of the moisturizer, so they're kind of useless. And um, then for your face and for your body, we need to use sunscreen. Now, this can become a point, a very sensitive point, because People who undergo chemo cannot tolerate quote unquote chemical sunscreens. But if you can tolerate it, I think the La Roche Posay Tolerian um, Double Repair Face Moisturizer is a really nice one um, because it is also um, a very, very rich in ceramides and helps to restore moisture. So I think this is a great one. But if you can't tolerate it, then I actually would recommend what I use on my kids, Think Baby, which is 20% zinc. It is not elegant. You will look like a ghost. There is no ways around it, but it will protect your skin. Unless you want to just splurge a little bit, I think the physical UV defense by SkinCeuticals, the tinted one, although it's not a universal tint, is better than a white one um, because it tends to melt into your skin better than the white one. Um, but it is a titanium and zinc combo. It is not a hybrid with anything quote unquote chemical. So I think those are great sunscreens that you guys can use as well. And if you cannot tolerate a sunscreen at all because your skin can't take it, then just get a face shield. These are amazing. Who cares what you look like? You will be the cool kid on the block. I swear to God, my husband does not want to walk with me in the summertime. And yet I get stopped by at least four to five people on a 30 minute walk every single time I wear it, asking me where I purchased this amazing visor. It's going to protect your face and your skin from the sun. And if you cannot wear this, but you just want to cover your body, get a UPF rash guard. Okay. This is one I got from a hotel I stayed at once. It is not pretty, but I will link over here and show a picture of some on Amazon that I actually have just not with me um, that are great for um, body protection. And shifting gears very quickly, radiation dermatitis. So like I said, it is basically a burn. The best thing you can use on a burn is biafine. So buy yourself boatloads of these. I will link them below. They are amazing. You can even baste your face in biafine instead of the Vaseline if you really want. Um, but it's a little bit more expensive. But I love biafine for the radiation dermatitis. And for the pits... Because people cannot tolerate any sort of deodorant, natural deodorants are kind of S-H-I-T, in my opinion. There is yet, I have yet to find one that I liked, and I've tried a bunch because I am slightly allergic to aluminum chloride. Um, I will say, just get your underarms Botoxed, okay? I have a bunch of patients who are undergoing chemo or radiation who I Botox their pits. I get the okay from the oncologist. Nine out of 10 oncologists are completely okay with it. Um, so get your underarms Botoxed so you don't have to worry about sweating there. Plus, you save yourself the headache of getting moisture in your armpits and getting any sort of erosions because you can't like protect your skin or keep it dry, etc. Take it from me. And then finalement, we're going to quickly talk about hair. All right. Minimize hair conditioners because it will add weight to your hair. Um, and instead use a very light detangler. This is one where honestly, enjoy the fragrance of the detangler. It's a form of aromatherapy. It's gonna ease your mind as long as you know, you're know you okay with potentially losing the hair. Nothing you do is gonna let the hair stick on your head, unfortunately, um, because chemo can be very, very strong. I love this one by Lola V, which is Jennifer Aniston's brand, and I'm not promoted by her at all at all, at all, at all, but I find the scent to be absolutely breathtaking and honestly a very beautiful form of aromatherapy and self-care. So use this instead of a thick conditioner to minimize the weight pulling down on your hair. And ultimately, if you have the guts to just shave it ahead of time, just, you know, Godspeed. Um, but yeah, that is chemo radiation skincare in a nutshell. I hope this video helps you. And if it doesn't help you, I hope it helps somebody you know who is undergoing this right now and who needs a list of resources that they can turn to or products that they can turn to um, during this time. And like I mentioned earlier, your soul is the strongest thing you have. Your soul is fire. Your soul controls your mind. Your mind is strong and willing to fight through. And your mind controls your body. 
And with that, I am Dr. Shireen Idris, and I am with you, and your whole Pillow Talk Durham nerd family is with you. And leave questions below. Anybody who's undergoing anything or has undergone anything, leave suggestions below. And I hope this video serves as a form of reference for anybody undergoing chemo or radiation. Have a beautiful Saturday.